All right, we'll move on to uh, Garfield County Commissioner District 2. And we have in person incumbent Republican John Martin and the Democrat challenger virtually, um, Beatrice Soto. We'll begin with uh, opening remarks, 90 seconds. Mr. Martin, you're up first. Oh, but thank you. You know, I'm John Martin. I'm just a regular guy. I happen to be a farmer, a cowboy, and a blue collar worker. I hold God, my country, and my family as my top priority, and I know that all life is precious. I'm a conservative by nature. I believe that government should be small but efficient. I believe that taxes should be fair and just. And I believe that a person should be able to make his own decisions and live with the results. Now, I support and respect our law enforcement and our military. I know what it is to suffer the pain and angst, and I was proud to serve. I also believe that a person who seeks protection under the law has an obligation to uphold that law. I am a 30 seconds. Thank you very much. Now, I'm an optimist, and I believe that there is good in all of us but I don't believe that one is better than the other. And I'll leave it at that right now. All right. Beatrice Soto, are you there? Yes, um, thanks Ron for having me. You're welcome and 90 seconds opening statement. Thank you. Um, I grew up as an undocumented child in Florida. My father brought me here when I was two years old. I moved um, with my widowed mother to the Roaring Fork Valley 22 years ago in search of a better life. At her side, I cleaned homes up and down the valley. I was fortunate enough to get a higher education and graduate as an architect in Mexico in 2004. Since then, I have worked in the Roaring Fork Valley designing custom homes, sustainable design, high performance building, net zero affordable housing projects, making sure our built environment is as efficient as possible and we are building to the highest standards. I've worked on residential and commercial projects, not just here, but also internationally. I'm LEED certified, and in 2007, I represented the state of Colorado at the Emerging Green Builders Competition for the U.S. Green Building Council. I have collaborated with the Mexican Green Building Council and helped other countries build to the quality of the U.S. In the past, um, I developed a workforce program for CORE to educate our construction workforce in building science and make sure that they are prepared to work with higher energy code standards and can compete in a changing and evolving industry. I currently run the Defiende Nuestra Tierra for Wilderness Workshop where I advocate for our public lands to elevate the voices of the Latino community on issues on environmental justice and civic, en in civic engagement. I also helped found Voces Unidas de las Montañas and I've served on the Five Point Board. And I'm the treasurer of the Glenwood Springs Elementary School and served at the Roaring Forks School District as a family advisory council. All right, thank you. Uh, Beatrice, we'll start with you with the first question. Um, in a recent forum, uh, you said about the man you hope to replace, John Martin, and I'm paraphrasing here, thank you for your service, time to go. Why does he need to go? Um, again, I want to thank Martin for his service. I know being a public servant is probably not an easy job, um, and I know it's a lot of responsibility, but I also think um, we should not have career politicians at a local level. Um, I definitely think that times change, the community change, we shift, um, and it's time for new ideas to open the opportunity um, for new people to lead as well. John did mention in his last candidacy that he was going to retire and that he was going to be a mentor for the next generation. Um, and he has not delivered to the promises that he made. And I believe, again, it's time for new leadership, for new ideas, and for new representation in Garfield County. Mr. Martin, your response. Well, thank you very much. I have been a mentor and I have been a mentor for 24 years to every citizen in Garfield County and bringing issues to bear. I want people to be involved, to be informed. 
I walk around and I talk to people. I try to get them excited. And I have been successful in doing that. And there are people that wish to step forward, but are waiting. They know at this present time that there is a tremendous pressure to go ahead and keep our present way of life. They are not ready and not acceptable to a new social order. I believe that I am stable, that I have the, the skills to continue, and that I will be a mentor to all, even while I sit as a county commissioner. Patrice, your uh, rebuttal or response? No, I have no rebuttal. Thank okay. You. Next question for Mr. Martin. Uh, the board, with you as the uh, longtime chair, has been criticized for wasting taxpayer dollars in various arenas and coalitions, battling things like the new oil and gas rulemaking process under Senate Bill 181, sage grouse habitat, etc. How do you respond? Not one dime has been wasted. What amounts to is our voice had to be heard. And the only way to do that is to join the arena and it costs money to do so. You need to have those that are experts in economic development that are in, again, the uh, biological field. We happen to have uh, an ability to pay for those folks. We also happen to have legal services that are outside because it does take tax. I'm sorry, it takes expertise to do so. It is about jobs. It is about of our economy. It is about our survival. It is not a fight, but it is a, an attempt to keep what we have. And that is a good economy, a strong county and people employed. If we did not, we would not be doing our business. We would not be good commissioners and we would just turn a blind eye and become poor. Ms. Soto, your response. Um, I don't believe that. Um, I believe what's happening is that we have not diversified our economy where we are not as reliant on this one single industry. Now we have all known in Garfield County that this industry fluctuates a lot. It's very, um, it's, it changes, right? It's not a stable industry. And I believe continuing to invest in an industry that is just a bridge industry that we are supposed to move away from from and especially in the middle of a pandemic where our community needs so much support on so many levels that is not the best use of our resources now in reality only three percent of the jobs in garfield county are in oil and gas yes our taxes are low because of it but that is not the end all we need to make sure that we're bringing in income from other sources and that we are supporting our community in these really hard times any rebuttal? Oh, yes. What amounts to is the industry is a force, but it also has the spinoff. It has a ripple effect on everyone from buying a car to buying your groceries to paying your mortgage because it has support services, not 3%, 20% of the economy. Those jobs are important as well. Yes, we have to fight for that, but it's for the citizens and for the economic stability of Garfield County. It is not about an industry. It is about all of us. It is about education. It is about recreation and having the ability to, again, attract those. It comes from, again, investments in all, but the protection of the 10 largest tax paying entities in the county. This question, Beatrice, um... As you're probably aware, the uh, county is in the final stages of formulating the 2021 budget, um, trimming a lot of money, uh, less revenues coming in, uh, trimming payroll, re reprioritizing capital projects. Uh, you've been critical of the county's budget practices. What would you do differently? Well, I would make sure that we are continuing to invest in capital projects. Um, and I would also like to investigate um, options for revenue bonds and making sure that maybe we can bring in additional money so we're not in an economic downturn and that we can keep jobs and without raising the taxes at a local level. We are at a point in history where um, borrowing money is really um, has really low interest rates and I think that can be an option. I would like to explore it once, um, once I'm in office to see if it's a viable solution to keep our economy going and making sure that we are diversifying from oil and gas and we're investing in other industries. Mr. Martin. 
Well, thank you. You know, uh, we balance our budget every year by a statute. It is required. We do invest all of our interest into Colorado Trust and all of the guaranteed incomes because that is a requirement by statute. We feel that our, our economic development issue is there. We diversed, we have airports, we have landfills, we have a lot of other businesses that we're trying to attract. Budgeting is a challenge, that is for sure. But you cannot borrow money to run operations or programs. It is against budget law. The only thing that you can do is borrow money for projects, and that is capital projects. And it's really interesting that, you're, that you have 19 different funds, and only two have the flexibility to move back and forth. And that happens to be the general fund, which is also required to keep 5% for emergency purposes and also the federal mineral leasing dollars that we put aside. Time. That is the only one. Oh, oh okay. Uh, rebuttal. Yeah, no, I just wanted to mention, you know, there's good debt and there's bad debt. And if we are in a time of crisis, we just have to be, you know, creative and we have to be bold. And again, we are going in a downturn because we have not diversified our economy and we have not worked as hard as we need to to make sure we are diversifying our economy. Mr. Martin, you've heard the term diversified economy uh, in response to the shrinking oil and gas revenues. What does that mean to you as a county commissioner and to what extent can a county accomplish that? Well, the, comp, uh, the county has invested into enterprise zones. It has gone to the uh, jumpstart. It has, uh, again, Economic Development Council. We have invested tremendously into the broadband uh, using our, our towers, re, uh, contracting with, with uh, um, Marathon, and also with Pitkin County. We understand that that is part of the future, and economic development is part of that. We've also invested into our airport, $40, $60 million. We have the Center of Excellence. We have uh, St. Mary's Life uh, flight helicopters. We happen to have fire uh, helicopter um, capabilities, refueling, uh, fire retardants, all of that drives other businesses around the airport. We also happen to have the enterprise of the landfill, recycling and using new technology. We use microbes to take care of the petroleum contaminated soil, sell the, the products again for compost and water, and it doesn't cost anything except for the microbes to do their job. We are looking at all sciences. We're, uh oh, there's another stop. Uh, Ms. Soto, again, exp expound if you would on diversifying the economy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we definitely don't, we don't have an office for diversifying our economy specifically. People task just to do this. Um, an advisory council is great, but I think we need to go beyond that and actually invest in this. Um, for example, we had $1.5 million to fight SB 181. We could use this to specifically, you know, pay for people to help us do this. Um, we can do knowledge-based professions distantly. Um, they have invested in broadband, but if you go to rifle, you don't get good signal. If you go to certain areas in our community, you don't get good signal. If we don't have that infrastructure, we cannot attract these businesses. So there's definitely parts that aren't complete. Now, I've also talked to a lot of business owners and I've asked, have you heard about the opportunity zones? Have you heard about these business districts? And the community doesn't, aren't even aware of them. So it's like, why aren't we, why isn't everything coming together if these opportunities exist and people aren't even informed? So I think there needs to be another level to push that economic diversity, diversification. Rebuttal, Mr. Martin. Well, we're looking at personnel and increasing budgets and increasing all of the, the items that go with what Patrice is saying. We can't afford it. What amounts to is we are using a shoestring budget to do stimulus, attract businesses, work with all of the government entities and the business, Economic Development Council, all the Chamber of Commerces, the businesses themselves coming forward, taking their suggestions, investing into the ideas and diversing our economy. Again, not putting all the eggs in one basket 
but building off of that and making sure that we have a true roadway of success. Final question, and I apologize, we're just skimming over the some big subjects and I know there's a lot more to talk about, but I appreciate uh, your answers. Uh, Ms. Soto, in a recent forum you addressed housing, uh, you mentioned the county's low inventory for first time buyers and that an influx of cash is pushing out the locals. Uh, how does the county commission solve that? I think through um, smart planning and making sure that we are attracting um, developers to our community, um, not just any developer, but just really thinking about the future, our energy use, um, communities that are age friendly, that are family friendly, and making sure that we are a key partner and and providing affordable housing solutions and not just affordable housing for tourist economy, but attainable housing. Um, I think there's a great opportunity there. Garfield County has a lot of open space and our, our towns are growing in such a way that we can really support towns like Silt and Newcastle and start to develop in those areas because there's um, good opportunities for attainable housing in those areas. Mr. Martin. We have a, a memorandum understanding with all the municipalities and we work that with them and we also agreed that all high density should be within the municipalities and that we should keep the open space open because that is in the master plan. That is what the citizens have decided to do both in the municipalities and in the county. We invest and use our credits for affordable housing, senior housing, we try to attract those with 1% loans, et cetera, through the program of HUD. We have the Garfield Housing Authority. The influx of the money is coming from outside of the area. They are leaving the large metropolitan areas because of the problems. They wanna have a quiet uh, rural community. We had smart growth and we have awards at smart growth that we have posted. We worked with that. Our planning and zoning folks pass rules and regulations to stimulate, again, the economy and, and the developers to come in and give them bonuses so that they can do affordable housing. That has not been taken up because that does not pencil out because it cannot exist outside of the municipalities. Rebuttal. Yeah, I also wanted to add that we need to do more types of housing that provides other options um, such as multifamily, um, mixed use, um, subdivision for retirees, and just a good variety of housing options um, that I'm not necessarily seeing in our community. And how are we being very strategic to make sure that we're creating those type of housings so different economic statuses can get into housing locally. All right, we move on to our closing remarks and uh, Mr. Martin, 90 seconds. Well, thank you very much. You know, I've been in the eye of the public for a long time and I hear all of the rumors that I am too old, that I'm a white and I'm male and that I've stayed too long. I also heard that I happen to be a barrier for the new progressive government and that I need to get out of the way. I can tell you, that I have a, a calling, a simple calling. And it's not driven by politics. It's not driven by an overstimulated ego. And it's not driven by, should we say, naivety around what is happening. It is driven by a simple but deep rooted calling. And that is a calling to serve and assist my common man, my fellow man. And I've done that through all of my beliefs and my programs. I feel that I am just, I happen to be decent, and I believe that the citizens want that kind of government and that they are not prepared and not willing to move over to a progressive, heavy-handed government. I hope that they are, have common sense, that they come to their senses and see what is on the horizon, both with the economic downturn and the movements that are in place. Ms. Soto, closing remarks. 
Thank you. Um, I'm usually asked, you know, how are you doing? And I usually say good, but to be honest, um, with COVID-19, racial and systematic injustices that we're feeling, some of us are feeling, it, in our county, it's obviously that we are in a crisis. And no, we are not doing okay. Not all of us. And that's okay to admit. And you know, oh, that's where the work starts. When we say we're not all doing okay, and we start acknowledging that we need to do more work. I want to bring innovative ideas to our county government. I'm going to work really hard to include the people that historically have not been involved in shaping the future of our community. And as I mentioned before, we have incredible talent, human capita, to move Garfield County to the 21st century. We need to thrive, not just survive. From our young farmers, entrepreneurs, incredibly talented young professionals, our immigrant community, we need to include all these voices. We need to collaborate, and that's what I want to do. I want to bring unity, and I want to work together to make sure we have a county that we have never seen before, creating partnership and fostering approaches that this county has never seen and make sure that we have an economy that works for all of us. We continue with our way of life and we have a community that is integrated and that we are working together. Thank you. Thank you so much, John Martin, Beatrice Soto. Thank you so much. Good luck in the election. Thank you very much. Thank you.